G'day, welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure. My name is Derek. Uh, I'm a DIY fabricator and today I propose to build a swing arm spare wheel carrier on this canopy. Are you listening? Firstly, want to start this video by apologizing uh, for taking so long to to, to to get this canopy done. Uh, from the start of this build, it has been around the, the fifth or the sixth months. At the moment, I'm actually just waiting for the gas truck to come in. Uh, so apparently, the size of the gas truck is pretty hard to get. Uh, there are all the stock in, in here, uh, and, and I'll just have to wait for around a couple of weeks. Uh, to get them in. I really want to make things uh, practical and I want to use this a couple of weeks to build a spare wheel carrier. We can have uh, some that is permanently attached onto the canopy but that requires quite a, quite a fair bit of engineering uh, because you need the aluminium part to be thick enough to hold uh, the spare wheel or alternatively you can use steel but then they will just add on some weight. But uh, for me, because the canopy is not uh, it's not a full size canopy, I've got this amount of space in there, uh, I do not really want to have the spare wheel hanging around here, just taking the space. Uh, so what I want to do, really, is to build a spare wheel carrier that is obviously removable and also is a swing arm from the canopy. Uh, so I can still access this amount of space Alright, to build a swing arm spare wheel carrier, uh, you've got to have a really, really strong hinge. There are not many ways that you can build a swing arm. I've considered going online and get myself a swing arm kit, but I, I honestly, I, I don't want to wait any longer for this project to finish. Alternatively, some people uh, use a trailer axle, uh, what they call the axle stuck. The axle stuff is rated uh, for whatever time, so it's really heavy too, so you can make sure that it works pretty fine. You've got to find a wheel hub that has no flange, uh, and that is really challenging. Uh, I think in the old days you can still find some flangeless wheel hub, uh, but I can't really find it anywhere else anymore. This is what I've got. Um, it is a heavy duty farm gate hinge uh, with a greasable nipple. So. It's actually a very smooth hinge, and I think this may do the trick, especially it's, it's heavy duty. Although it's actually not rated, uh, but I mean, but look at the thickness of the steel, and it's welded. Uh, I believe this hinge should be really strong. Usually, you find um, the swing arm spare wheel carrier goes onto the bumper or the rear bar. So, my canopy is only a, a short half canopy, so. Uh, if the swing arm goes onto the bumper, it really hangs out really a lot. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is to put a swing arm on the canopy. The only way that I can think of is by using the two slots in here. To build a hinge of a swing arm tire carrier, uh, this part is particularly important because the hinge actually carries the most amount of weight. For that reason, you will need some serious material uh, in order to fabricate this strong structure. For that reason, 
I've chosen steel to be my primary material for this hinge. Alright, so my plan is, we're going to cut out a notch in here, so it fits, the, the hinge fits a little bit better, uh, and also it's a little bit stronger as well, because it has three welds uh, holding the hinge. My welding experience is very limited, but all I can tell you is that a clean surface is very important. From the welding pool, uh, and also from the spark, you can actually tell the surface is clean and uh, as long as the weld process um, goes okay you know that you've done the right thing Oh, yes! The next part of this project is to work on the attachment from the steel hinge to the aluminium swing arm. This part is a little bit tricky because you have to work out the right width uh, of, the, uh, of the steel hinge in order to fit in the clearance of the aluminium swing arm perfectly without too much of an excess movement because that's not what you want to. More space means more excess movement of the aluminium swing arm and that will also mean uh, the tire carrier moves a little bit more while the car is moving, especially in off-road corrugation. Hey guys, so the next part of this spare, re spare wheel carrier build is to build the arm. And the special thing about this design is that, uh, as you can see, I've used heavy duty steel for the hinge. And then I've chosen aluminium as the, uh, the wheel carrier arm. Uh, the reason is, it's lighter and honestly, if I use a little bit thicker of an aluminium material, um, it's really strong and I use nasty to describe it. Now, the size of the arm, uh, I believe it is 200 mil by around 25 for one piece and this is actually a 4 mil thick aluminium so it's a really strong structure uh, very difficult to cut as well so I'd say it is also mechanically strong enough to hold a spare wheel I'm going to double this up so uh, at the end it will be 4 mil aluminium uh, 200 wide plus around 50 to 60 mil depth The steel component of this project is complete. Now it is time to switch on to the aluminium gear. The aluminium gear that I've got is a Unimec spool gun. Um, so essentially it is a, a welding torch uh, that has got a straight nose and also you've got a spool of aluminium wire at the, right at the end of the gun. The good thing about this spool gun is that it really speeds up the production speed but the disadvantage of it is that uh, it's quite hard to control and honestly it's a little bit heavy uh, compared to the normal MIG welding torch.
Alright, uh, so the arm looks like this at the moment, but the gap is too big to weld. So, I found a rod of aluminium, so I guess this will do the trick. And it fits perfectly, so that's my decision. The next part of this build is to build a wheel mounting plate. So I've combined three pieces of 4mm aluminium and it becomes 12. Uh, and 12mm aluminium is thick enough to allow the studs, the wheel studs, to pass through. And it's actually the easiest part of this build. You've probably noticed I've been using some woodworking tools to cut aluminium. Um, it's actually quite an effective method. Uh, but my advice to you is that you just have to be extra cautious uh, because sometimes uh, if, if you put too much pressure um, the, uh, the teeth from the saw will just grab hold of the uh, working piece it will just be a very dangerous scenario Alright, uh, so the next step is to find out the, the stud pattern So in order to do so, I'm going to use a piece of paper and my dirty hands to find out the position of the holes uh, I think I'm going to use three studs because one pack comes, uh, a pack has six studs in there. So I'm going to use uh, three in each. So I'll space the, the next three for the next spare wheel. Alright, so I'm going to just <laughs> going to wipe the hole using my dirty hands. And the dust will be collected on the, on the margin of the hole. Can you see the dust? <laughs> this is called a dust collection method. Uh, it's very useful for working on panels, and in this case, I'm going to. Uh, it's just for the studs. You can see the wheel carrying plate is done, it's got three studs on it. Uh, standard studs, 14mm, it fits perfectly. Uh, so now the next step really is to work out the post, where to put a post on this swing arm, uh, and on the post, sort of have to find out the offset uh, of the plate and the, and, the, and the post, and work out the angle, so the wheel sort of um, leans onto the canopy a little bit. Uh, so it's not as far, as far out at the back. So I've got uh, the rest of the arm that I actually cut out previously. So that's the rest, uh, that's the off cut in other words. Um, I think I'm going to make good use of these off cuts. Uh, weld them back together and put it up there as a post. So once this is done, I'll have to work out the distance, uh, the, aka the offset, and, um, and just to weld on the plate and put some gussets to make it strong.
the part that connects the wheel carrier plate and the post is made of formula aluminium sheet. This formula aluminium sheet was actually from a drawer system that is no longer in use. Uh, luckily I have it and I cut out the right size, uh, used the miter saw to cut some shallow lines and then it makes it easier to bend. So it essentially becomes a uh, rectangular hollow section and ultimately I just used the spool gun to weld the corners and strengthen the whole structure. The aluminium spare wheel carry is starting to take into shape so I think it is probably a good idea to put the gears up and see how it looks like. So this is how the swing arm looks like at the moment. Uh, so the, the spare tire sits on it very nicely, a little bit of an angle inwards. But I'm still not quite happy about how the spare tire is not that close to the canopy. So I think some work needs to be done. Alright, I've made a mistake. Uh, the design was to angle this tire a little bit so the top of the tire can lean against the canopy. Uh, so in order to make this arm a little bit more mechanically favorable. Now, apparently this length should be a little bit shorter by this much. So the whole tire goes back a little bit closer to the canopy uh, and therefore the arm is a little bit more balanced. The leverage created by the tire is a little bit too much for the arm and that's why the arm is a little bit twisting. So I have to try my best to shorten the distance in here. So what I'll be doing is to cut this arm back out again. So bust all this weld and cut it out uh, and shorten the arm by this much. Uh, and hopefully the, the arm is a little bit more balanced and we'll bring a tire up and, and match track and test fit it to see if everything goes all right. Alright, so that part was done. I've fixed the small arm a little bit so the whole tire now moves, it is closer to the canopy. Uh, but the problem is not solved. So I'll show you how it works at the moment. Uh, so the tire sits happily inside. And then now I'll pull this out, right? So first it dropped all of a sudden, but it is still holding up. It is strong enough to hold it up. So it just comes out like so. So that hinge works pretty all right, but as you can see, it actually still swings a fair bit, and uh, I'm not—I'm just not happy about how, how much it swings. And then when you go back in there, you can't go back up nicely because it's it's dropped, and I'll just have to lift it up a little bit, like so. Or if you go back up, it's like that. But then it swings. The problem is the biggest problem. So there are quite a few things that I can do to minimize the swing. Uh, because as you know, uh, if I go off-road, bumpy off-road, corrugation, obstacles, that whole thing eventually will fatigue. You know, aluminium arm is flexible and it eventually will crack. You see that little three mil angle in here? Uh, that is just too flimsy and it's just not enough area to hold this arm. So what I'll be doing, I'll make something a little bit more heavy duty, uh, probably around 4 or 5 mil, 
uh, and it basically goes out here, forms a little concave surface, and then maybe go up here, and then it goes back down. So when the tire comes back, I mean the arm comes back, it hits this gradient, and then it sort of slides up, and then it fits into the concave surface very nicely. And that way, it is another way to lock this arm in. Right, the second part is about this, uh, I think it's called rotary latch uh, or bust latch. So basically what uh, the mechanism is, you slam a bar onto here and it locks it, locks it in. Uh, and then to release it, you either pull these two levers or you press that mechanism here. Uh, so in this case, it, because it stays behind the tire, I have to control this by cable. It's just like the the brake sort of system uh, and you pull this out and you put this down and that catch releases the tire carrier um, so I guess at this stage we'll work through these two things first and then I'll see what happens after that So as you as you can see, the supporting bracket that I made just now uh, it sort of prevents the uh, it blocks it stops the wheel carrier from going in smoothly. Uh, well, I, I guess it's something that I'll fix a little bit later. But what's important at the moment is that you see it doesn't want to come out at all uh, because the concave surface of the bracket it actually uh, fits the uh, arm very nicely. Um, so now. It still swings, uh, but then it won't actually come out. But of course, I'll still have to put a, uh, a toggle latch on the side uh, to basically just make sure it doesn't doesn't come up as I'm driving. Well, the next step really uh, is to make a latch. This is called a rotary latch. Uh, as I showed you earlier, uh, it, it is controlled by this movement. So uh, there is a bar that comes onto it and it catches it. So that's going to see. I'll show you. Oh, this. Okay. Now this is going to sit sit on somewhere here, and as the wheel carrier comes in, and that basically is a mechanism that catches the wheel carrier and it eliminates the swing. All right. Let me try to explain a little bit better uh, about how this works. So at the, at the moment we've got this that's holding the arm, and I'm I'm honestly I'm quite happy about how it turns out. Uh, I'm just not happy about how how it locks the whole thing from moving in and out. Uh, yeah, but that's that's secure. That's what I'm happy about. Uh, that latch is going to stay here. I probably have to make a bracket uh, for it to mount onto here as well. Uh, so stay here. And then uh, it hopefully sits around this position. 
then I'll be having this bar. Uh, it's an M14 high tensile uh, bolt, and I'm going to use this as the bar uh, to catch the arm onto this ledge. Sounds a little bit poetic, but uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. And hopefully, if I if I can tune the position very accurately, uh, it just holds the, the upper portion of the arm very nicely. Hey. The cap of the post, that is where the M14 bar sits, uh, is made of two plates of 4mm aluminium and it becomes 8mm. Uh, and 8mm provides enough thickness for me to cut some M14 thread. I present to you this rotary latch mechanism on a, on a spare wheel carrier. It's actually controlled by a cable, and in my case it's a stainless steel cable connected to this lever. And the lever at the moment is a bit loose, I'm going to put a spring to tension it up so it doesn't uh, rattle around. Now all it is, as I tension this lever or cable, with a bit of weight on here, it just releases it. And as I slam it back on, it catches the carrier and it won't let go. Uh, I had this idea from Dirt Lifestyle and thanks, thanks for that man. Uh, that really helps me out a bit uh, because obviously it's aluminium uh, tire carrier and it's, it flexes quite a fair bit. I mean even with, with his long uh, steel carrier, that's very sturdy and it still flexes quite a fair bit. So, Whichever way, no matter how, how heavy duty the arm is or the, the hinge is, I reckon there is still a need to have something up top here anyway. And that rotary catch is a perfect uh, mechanism, perfect tool for it. So the next part of this build will be about a toggle latch. And that toggle latch uh, is going to go on to the swing arm. And it, all, all it is is, well you know what a toggle latch does. The intentions are, holds it, uh, and it never comes off. Now, to do that, I'll have to thread some M6 holes on this plate, and that plate is going to go on here. Uh, so once this is done, the last thing really for this build is to put some gut sets around the corner and around the bottom of, of the carrier. Uh, so just to add on a bit of strength. And once this is done, I'll just tidy up, sand everything, and that will be complete.
while I'm making this swing arm carrier, I think it's probably a good idea to beef up the rear vertical rack. So this rack actually helps to mount several things. For example, uh, the tools, axes, shovel, uh, and some recovery gear as well. At this stage, I still have no idea what I'll be putting on, but I guess it opens up options for me to put things up and mount things in the future. Once they have it, that's a removable spare wheel carrier and it's got a swing arm as well. So I can access uh, the amount of space in the back of the new. A couple of features, uh, that's removable, so if you don't want your spare wheel, you want your space, you can actually take the whole arm off. Uh, it is bolt on, it's aluminium, it's lightweight, uh, enough guts as to hold the structure. Uh, it's got a toggle latch that holds the arm in place and also it's got a rotary latch on the top controlled by a cable um, and a lever that allows, uh, that holds the top of the uh, spare wheel carrier so it won't flex and won't swing as you drive. So I'll, I'll quickly show you how it works. As I'm heading towards the end of this build, I hereby put on the spare tyre and the max tread as well. Uh, to test the practicality of this spare wheel swing arm carrier. Guys, you saw how that works, and I'm now very happy about how it turns out. It's, it's holded by three things the toggle latch, the concave surface and bottom that supports the spare wheel, and also the rotary latch uh, with the high tensile bolt bar on, on the top that holds the spare wheel without flexing. Right, guys, I'm so glad that how this has turned out. Uh, so that part is done, and so we are just Really, just waiting for the gas trucks to come in to complete the roof. Uh, so hopefully another two weeks, and I'll post a video up here. Okay, guys, if you like this sort of content, if you like my DIY projects, and if you also find this helpful, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, press like and notification. You can also find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Just search up Custom Craft and Adventure. You can find me there. All right. And at in, in the end of this video, I'll also uh, give you a few clips uh, about how that works and uh, just give you a bit of idea as well, alright? I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.